Hello students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. K. R. Ram Mohan, Associate Professor, Head, Department of Anthropology, CKB University. Today we are going to talk on a module called Structuralism, Levi-Strauss and Edmund Leach. This module is from paper theories and methods in social and cultural anthropology. So what are the learning objectives in this module? To introduce the history of anthropological thought of structuralism by tracing its historical development, to classify the course of historical development, academic and anthropological importance in terms of its development, also, an attempt is made to look into the methodological approaches to the origin of culture. Let us see how this the whole structuralism has evolved. The prevailing theoretical orientation in anthropology during the early 19th century and half let, let, next part of the 19th century was based on a belief that culture generally evolves from uniform and progressive manner in a sense that it is called classical evolutionism. That is, most societies were believed to pass through the same series of stages to arrive ultimately towards a common end, all the societies in the world must have had same series of evolution and most of the scholars consider modern anthropology as an outgrowth of this age of enlightenment, a historical period where most of the Europeans attempted to study human behavior systematically and all the known varieties in all these societies of which had been increasing from the beginning of 15th century as a result of this first European colonization wave. Structuralism as a school of thought focus on effects of this universal patterns in the human thought on cultural phenomena. So they want to see how cultural phenomena are the product of human thought, although not attempting to explain these cultural patterns, structuralism rather presents them as a result of the subconscious of universal human knowledge. So that means structuralism recognizes that there is or some kind of a thought process involved across all the cultures of this world which might have resulted in the same things or similarities. So the thought process was very important at a, a structural level. So we can see there is a link between social norms and the human mind thought process is so much ingrained deeply within the individual cultures. So when this process is gaining momentum, it becomes logical thought which take into specific actions, thoughts and the numerous activities which are essentially con conceptualized in these aspects. So generally we can say this whole thought process which is being done by the peoples across all cultures of the world could lead to a psychic unity. States that all human beings or all human species, no matter we have all differences in race and culture, we have different races, there are so many races which according to physical anthropologists will give and we have so many cultures might have shared the same basic psychological makeup 
despite many differences that all societies they have. So structuralism was interested this psychological makeup rather than the objectively seen people's races and cultures. So what was that thought process? How it was structured was the main component of structuralism. Now, even with this universal knowledge, every culture retains its own specific cultural structure. So structuralism represents a historical movement that began in 1950s and 1960s, particularly in France. Emily Dorkiam generated the idea that human thought precedes observation and the social and cultural phenomena derive from this universal human cognition. That means whatever we observe, there could be a thought process behind these social activities. Unless there was a thought process behind the social activities, these activities would have not come into place. And we, we cannot observe these social activities in a given culture. Then Claude Lévi-Strauss, considered to be the founder of structuralism, which basically took Durkheim's basic concepts to generate more and more profound ideas in structuralism. So such social structures, which as an end product which we can see from each cultures, according to Lévi-Strauss, mirrors cognitive structures. See, every society has certain social activities, granted, people do in some very and all. But how does these structures come into that? Lévi-Strauss believes that and he proposes that these social structures are nothing but the cognitive structures of the human mind. The way in which mankind thinks and understands for the first time in the history, Lévi-Strauss has come out with these kinds of explanation. That a serious thought process was involved in these social structures that one has to discover. So, structuralism is an approach which seeks to isolate, put it aside and decode we have to see, we have to unravel the codes and what are the deep structures of the meaning which lie behind it, which are organized through systems of signs inherent in human behavior. For example, language. How does, what kind of language the structure takes? The rituals. What are the meanings behind the rituals? Or the dress that people wear. Why do they wear that dress? There could be some thought process. So according to structuralism, the human mind functions on binary opposites. Like two opposites to each other. So human beings see things in terms of two forces that are opposite to each other. For example, night and day. Binary opposites differ from society to society and are defined in particular cultures in a way that is logical to its members. Now, a simple example like shoes are good when you wear them outside. If you, if you put on shoes and we go them outside. But if the same shoes or chapels, you bring it and put it on the eating table or in the dining table, it becomes bad. 
now why a culture see the same object as good somewhere the same object bad in another way so these are the two binary opposites so our job as an anthropology student to understand these rules and to interpret that culture so in a sense culture is like a language <coughs> we have to interpret to the others so what is the the whole idea of structuralism or we can say what is the method of structuralism like levi strauss says that the idea of binary oppositions coordinates a certain ways of human thinking the examples of these binary systems can be life versus death culture versus nature self and others each individual concept has an opposite concepts that is codependent on it so what happens after life there is death what happens in nature there is culture if you have a self there should be other without other there is no self so in this way they are codependent with each other without day there is no night without night there is no day so this is known as the unity of opposites though they are opposites but they are united without that without black you cannot understand white without white you cannot understand black so no one of these ideas can exist without the other that one has to understand so every community takes these concepts and makes them specific to their individual culture we do not know that how a culture constitutes these binary opposites and how they uniting together so presenting universal ideas and oppositions and uniting them under a unique cultural standpoint which eventually forms a structured and organized society so these ideas related to what a major branch in anthropology called linguistic anthropology where it studies that in all that humans have a common base for which can create complex sounds and different languages language is nothing but sounds that we make and these sounds are meaningful sounds for example i am doing like this this sound has a meaning i am i am i am delivering a lecture this sound is different than this sound so taking the idea of phonemes or pairs of sounds that create meaning and bringing the same concept into structuralism that humans share a common base for the thought or the thought process which is leading to development of different cultures stem from the same unconscious roots one of the significant contributions in structuralism is a study of kinship systems every society every culture has its own kinship systems because people are placed directly or indirectly in these kinship systems starting from the own blood relatives affinal relatives to other relations so how did people have these kinship systems when when societies are historically not connected to each other so in the studies of the structures of kinship the systems derive from deeply rooted patterns of human cognition based on logical oppositions of contrastive categories 
So kinship system is nothing but contrast two categories in its sense. For example, a contrasting category of kinship could be a relationship with different cultures of immediate family members and marriage. Siblings, sister, brother is different from wife and wife's sister. So in that sense, universally studies have shown that in almost all cultures, there is an incest taboo. You know what is incest taboo? Means marrying a direct family member is not allowed. I cannot marry my own sister. You cannot marry your own sister or your own brother. Why? And this is found in almost all cultures in this world. How does this happen? A culture somewhere far off, historically not connected somewhere. You did not talk, you did not tell them and say that, do you have incest taboo in your society? We have incest taboo. We did not communicate. But how does parallelly, historically, this culture also have an incest taboo and this culture also have an incest taboo? How does this happen? What could have what could have made human societies that one should not marry their own sisters and brothers and mothers and fathers? Perhaps structuralist ideas can give more close towards understanding how does this might have evolved in, in understanding these kinds of cultural categories. Levistos proposed this. Another interesting feature is the study of myths. So he collected numerous myths across South America and other parts of the world to study whether myths produced by these cultures or can be understood at a structural level. So levi was discussing the differences between modern science and mythological thought and how they are connected. Because myths are dif different from science. So using mathematics as an example, levi explains that the human mind is able to create a triangle with perfectly straight lines or a circle even though these don't, don't exist in nature. Interestingly, mathematics you cannot see directly in nature, it is only abstract. What is number 17? You don't see number 17 in nature like a physical object. But it is there, the number 17 is there. So, these things were imprinted on the human mind, be an example of mind versus experience. While exploring the differences of experience versus mind, he, Levi Strauss, mentions his own ways of like primitive thinking and the civilized mind. And Strauss suggests that the elimination of stark contrast between the idea of primitive and the civilized society. So Levi Strauss explains that the primitive mind is as equally good as the civilized mind. What the civilized people thought process is also same as the primitive men who lived centuries and centuries long ago. A logical thought was the same structures of the mind. There is no difference between these two. Today we have a 21st century mind and the, the, the primitive minds thinking. And there is a similarity of minds between all kinds of people, not only the civilized and the primitive, but across all cultures of this. Taking this as a parallel, Strauss believes that all minds, all society, people's thinkings are same or similar in some way or the other. And we should treat primitive cosmologies as rational, coherent and logical. How primitive men thought was completely rational, it was not irrational. How the primitive men thought down the ages centuries ago was completely coherent, it was not incoherent. And it is completely perfectly logical which was not illogical. So with this 
Strauss major works are profound impact in the studies of anthropology or elementary structures of kinship. A theoretical work where he showed that many marriage rules can be understood on the basis of principles of reciprocity and exchange. And his famous work on totemism, where Levi Strauss shows that animal and natural objects are chosen as symbols for individual clans or families because they are useful as linguistic classificatory devices. Some people have a clan that this gotra, that gotra as a tree or a snake or a lion or a leopard or a bird. What, how people choose these categories and why did they choose? In these classificatory devices are to conceptualize and organize social relationships and groups. For example, this totemic group should not marry that totemic group. This totemic of this group should not have alliance with that group. So in this work, Strauss discussed the different aspects of totems as practiced by the tribes of the Amazonian Brazil. And the another major book, he says that in his savage mind, how the mind of a primitive man, the savage mind. In that he says that primitive man's thinking is completely coherent, logical and it was purposeful. So in that sense we can say Levi-Strauss has significantly contributed to the structuralist approach of understanding kinship, understanding marriage, understanding myths and how we construct the social realities. So we need to also study another important thinker in the structuralist school of thought is Edmund Leach. Edmund Leach major ethnographic studies are in Myanmar and even in Sri Lanka which gave us a wonderful ethnographic book on the political systems of highland Burma and Kachin social structure. So in the political systems of highland Burma Like Malnowski's unforeseen internship in the Troubleland Islands, this has given a general, generalization of these uh, social units. The other works which he also carried is Pul Elia, a village in Ceylon, where Leach provided a meticulous cataloging of land tenure holdings and relation to kinship systems which gives many clues that how people this Pulelia categorized at one level their clan system and in relation to their land holding pattern and how did they arrange particularly or basically understood at a structural level. Now being understood the the structuralist school of thought, we also should understand the next phase of structuralism is the post-structuralist understanding. Well, structuralism was very popular during 1960s and 70s. It has its own set of criticisms and uh, attacks. Post-structuralist says that to understand an object, it is necessary to study both the object itself and the systems of knowledge, which were coordinated to produce the object. So in this sense, post-structuralist believes that the sign and the signifier, who produced its sign? So structuralism looks at the society in the present without any regard for the past, completely ignoring the historical context of the development of the ideas. So structuralism therefore 
does not account for social change, which is basically a, some kind of a shortcoming to the structuralist claim. So, in that sense, Strauss assumptions about the structures of human thought or universal gives a room for a little bit of skepticism, in a sense, criticism that there is no scientific research demonstrating his connections. How could he draw a parallel without doing ethnographic studies in terms of myth collections, in terms of kinship relations? Because Levi Strauss could not bring it in a scientific way, there is no empirical evidence showing that the development of the human brain So, Levi Strauss did not give much importance to history and the economies of the societies. With this, scholars did not fully agree Straussian understanding from a structuralist point of view that without history and without understanding the economy of the societies, how can we fully decipher or give meanings to all the social reality? To summarize, Structuralism is a school of thought which has its base in the linguistic analysis of Federer de Saussure that linguist languages operate at a structural level. All languages must have a deep structure. Without structures, language cannot be spoken as phoneme and morpheme as a lingua and parole. So drawing the inspiration and concepts from a linguistic understanding of the structures, Lévi-Strauss wanted to take these structures to human thought. Perhaps human beings from the civilization point of view might have the same similar structures of thought process. So structuralism believes that at one point of there are similarities between all the human thought process in understanding kinship, in understanding certain universal practices like incest taboo, in understanding the creations of myth, myth constructions, in understanding about the practices which carried out the marriage rules, that there could be a strong connection between human thought across the world. And Strauss also was interested to come to a conclusion that the primitive thought process was no different with the current civilized thought process. But Post-structuralists did not agree the way Straussian analysis of these things he has produced like totems and symbols and the universal categories of marriage rules.